Good evening. It wasn't on policy that the Daily Mail touched a nerve with Ed Miliband. It was his father's beliefs, his view of Britain and the Marxist academic's memory. They described Ralph Miliband as the man who hated Britain, who bequeathed an evil legacy. Ed Miliband denies that and says the paper has crossed the line. Tonight, the Daily Mail is standing by its journalism. It continues to insist Professor Miliband, who died in 1994, hated the Queen, the Church and the Army and wanted a workers' revolution. Our political correspondent Libby Vina reports. He's not been afraid to take on the tabloids before, but this time with Ed Miliband, it's personal, deeply personal. The Labour leader so angered by what the Daily Mail said about his father, claiming he hated Britain, he took to the airwaves to condemn the newspaper. It's a lie. I'm even more appalled that they've repeated that lie today and they've gone further and described my father's legacy as evil. Now, evil is a word re reserved for, for particular cases and, and I wasn't willing to let that stand and that's why I've spoken out and that's why I've said what I've said. He doesn't dispute his father, Ralph, was on the left of British politics. In this footage, backing a student protest at the London School of Economics. Dr Miliband, there was no mention of strike in your statement. Is there any chance you might strike? I think it's not impossible that we might agree on a one-day strike. But he claims the Daily Mail selectively quoted from his father's diary, ignoring his war record when he served in the Royal Navy, taking part in the D-Day landings. Britain saved his life. It saved his life. And this paper is saying that, that he hated Britain. Having given him the right to reply, the Mail today republished an abridged version of the original article, entitled, we repeat, This Man Did Hate Britain, and an editorial in which it stood by every word of the story, from the headline to our assertion that the beliefs of Miliband Sr. should disturb everyone who loves this country. Even his political opponents felt that was below the belt. Frankly, if someone attacked my father in print, I would want to get back in print and defend him. I mean, all of us, Ed or me, were incredibly proud of our fathers. And when you lose your dad, there isn't a day that goes by you don't think about them. So I, don't, I, would, I would react in exactly the same way as him. One former Labour cabinet minister went further, suggesting given its own history in the 1930s, the Daily Mail should hesitate before bringing up the past. I do bear in mind his father fled from Europe to fight the fascists, joined the Royal Navy, and at that time, uh, Viscount Rothermere, who owned the Daily Mail, was actually writing in support of the fascist black shirts. Now, would I then follow the same rule and blame Mr Dacre, the editor, for the views of the owner? No, I wouldn't. But the mail tonight was unrepentant, suggesting Ed Miliband was motivated as much by a desire to restrict press freedom as to defend his father's reputation.